this is the biggest problem in many organizations. They promote the best, let's call them technician. They promote the best technician into the role of running the team. And then what happens is two things go wrong. You lose your best salesperson or your best technician or your best accountant, and then you gain a bad leader and the whole team becomes unhappy. Because if a leader is not a good leader, everybody struggles. Welcome to the call. Thank you. Uh, now, we've brought you in to talk about leadership today. Now, but before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about your background. So how did, how did you get into to, um, teaching leadership? Well, I was 20 years in corporate and in 2012, my younger brother sadly passed away. And it was such a shock for me that it brought me to this crossroads and I started to question so many things. And the thing I questioned was, am I really living my best life? And, you know, he was here one minute and gone the next, if I died tomorrow, would I be happy? And what I came to understand about myself was I was successful as how everyone terms it is subjective, but I, I was, it was like unfulfilling success. I had successful in certain terms, but I felt unfulfilled. And I just got this intuitive impulse one day to join something called the John Maxwell team. So John Maxwell, for those who don't know who he is, he's the world's number one leadership author, speaker and coach, and he's written over a hundred books. Um, and he's also, this book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership is the best-selling leadership book in the world. And this was put into my hands back in 1998. And I've read several of his books over the years. So in 2012, after my brother passed away, I just really wanted to do something purposeful. So I joined the John Maxwell team, went over to Orlando, spent a week with John and got certified as a coach, speaker and trainer. Every year since then, I've gone over for a week and done the same thing. So what I was... Um, about to say to you was, you know, when you really have value added to you, you just want to share it with other people. So that happened to me. I came back from Orlando. I had so much training. We were on calls all the time and all this value added to me. I just wanted to share it. So one day I just put out something called a lunch and learn in my corporate job in the boardroom. I just said, anyone wants to come during lunchtime, bring your lunch and I'm just going to do a free leadership presentation. And I don't know if anyone was going to turn up. And actually the room got quite a few people in. And when I delivered that talk on leadership, it was the first time I shared some stuff that I'd learned. Anyway, I got back to my desk and the girl sitting next to me said, Janine, how did you enjoy giving that leadership talk? I said, you know what, Karen, I loved it. I loved it with a passion. And as I said the word passion in my head, bing, the voice of my mentor reminded me because I, I was lost and I didn't know what my life purpose was. And my mentor said, uh, um, like a year before, I was trying to understand it, he said, in your passion lies your God-given purpose. So the minute I caught myself saying, oh, I love that, I love the passion, I thought, is it possible that this could be my life purpose? Anyway, limiting beliefs flooded in and I thought, oh no, how can I do that? I've got 20 years of experience in corporate, in, a, in retail and research and a different side. Who's gonna pay me to speak or coach or train? Anyway, the feeling never left me and I just worked on myself and in 2015, I stepped out of corporate and I've been running my own business um, more successfully, to be honest, than I've ever done. And I left as director of a multinational when I left corporate in 2015. So really and truly, if you step into your passion and you really love what you do, I believe um, you'll you'll do well. So I this is what I do today. I um, These are, I've got 20 John Maxwell books there on my bookshelf. I help people through either one-on-one -on -one coaching or leadership masterminds. And masterminds are the best thing ever because you dig into a book. We know everyone can read. It's not about reading the book, but it's getting together as a group and sharing a little bit, like let's say a chapter or two every week over maybe eight to 12 weeks. And in a process like that, people actually do change. So there's more value. I don't really believe much in two-day leadership workshops. People go back to their desks and 98% of their behavior stays the same. Yeah, so with that, sorry, I'm just going to put this on. I've got a truck decides to pull up at the front of my house for right now. <clears throat> there you go. So with with leadership, I mean, I've I've been around for a while, bouncing around business coaches, bouncing around seminars, and, and leadership gets thrown around a lot um, as a as a buzzword. But what does it what does it actually mean? Like, if 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 business owners want to step up and improve their leadership, what does it actually mean to do that? 
Well, that's really a good question. I think leadership is sometimes mixed up with the word management and people think when they have a title or a certain role that they're now a leader. And that's the furthest thing from the truth that may be what you perceive yourself to be initially because you've got the role and the title. But as months roll on, leadership is about having followers. So it's about influence. So leadership is, John Maxwell, even in his words, one of the laws of leadership is, is influence. It says leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And the way we gain influence is by adding value to people. It's not a form of manipulation or powering up over people or um, being autocratic in any way. That's absolutely not what it is. And when we add value to people, that's true leadership because the heart of a leader is serving the people. So when you say, what is leadership about? It's about people. It's about people. It's for people. It's getting work and results through people. And, you know, back in the 80s, there was so much emphasis on management and Peter Drucker was like quite big and many other people there. And leadership became more of a buzzword in after the year 2000, I would say. And I think there needed to be a mind shift change because people were distant sometimes from their people. And, you know, you thought it was important that people don't really get to know you, but that's the opposite. You need to, you need to touch someone's heart before you can ask them for a hand. That's basically what leadership is. And what, what would be the key? What, what's the difference, the key difference between management and leadership? Well, management is a, it's a title that you have. It's about managing things, controlling things, measuring things, maintaining the status quo, checklists, um, systems, processes. Leadership is about inspiration, direction, vision, casting, influence, adding value to people. Very different. Okay. No worries. And at what point do you shift or, or, or do you have to balance both roles? Like what, when do you go, okay, I'm a manager or I'm a leader or am I both at the same time? Is that? Well, a person, let me tell you, honestly, Colin, everybody's a leader. You're a leader. I'm a leader. The mother with three kids is a leader. A man working for himself in his own business as an entrepreneur is a leader because if leadership is influence, every engagement we have with another human being is an opportunity to influence them. So you can know yourself if you've ever been in a boardroom and the boss is there but no one's really paying much attention or wanting to get work with them or buying into whatever the boss is saying. And then someone else in the room speaks who's not the boss and all heads turn and people start following. You get that. You've seen that. Everyone's seen that in their life. You'll go to a, a dinner party and someone's leading. You'll go to watch kids on a playground and one kid there is leading. So leadership is about influence. So it doesn't matter your title or position. You can make a massive difference and add value to people anywhere. And it really does come from adding value. If anyone is um, wondering, like, how do I experience this? I just say, start today by thinking with intention, who could I actually add value to today? Just go out, step out of your comfort zone and do that. And I think people need to look at their own conditions and circumstances as an opportunity to develop their leadership ability. Some people think, oh, I need to go on a course or, you know, get trained. Yes, that does count and that's fantastic. But your own situation where you are, any area of your life, whether it's your personal life at home with your family or with your parents, some people have got fictional relationships there, or at work, things aren't working so well, or you keep bumping heads or you're feeling stuck or you're struggling with problems. All these areas of our life are honestly opportunities for us to develop our leadership ability. And it's... it's a book like this, well, I would say that this is John Maxwell's latest book. It's called Developing the Leader Within You 2.0. This is the book I actually start all masterminds with. It used to be the 21 Laws of Leadership. I refer to them throughout, but this book is really fantastic. And if I can just tell you, just there's only 10 words, just the 10 words of what the chapters are, a person can get a handle on it. The one is the definition of leadership, which is influence. The next one is the key to leadership, which is priorities. So you think about people who are struggling with this organization, if they learned how to prioritize and what that really meant, something like the 80-20 principle, the Pareto principle, get your, get your to-do list, prioritize and start with the top 20% most important urgent things. You'll be effective. Sometimes we're busy the whole day, but we're ineffective because activity is not accomplishment. 
Yeah, wow. And what what sort of results have you seen from helping people um, become better leaders? Like, do you see improvements oh, yeah. in productivity? So I've got this beautiful story that I love to share. When I was back in corporate and I became John Maxwell certified, I was doing masterminds for free wherever I could after hours. And there was a group of 10 of us where I was working before, and we came to the one chapter in the 21 laws of leadership, which is about the law of addition. People are either adders or subtractors. You're never in the middle. You're either intentionally adding value or you're automatically, um, not ignorant, but unaware. And then you are by default a subtractor. And if you look at life that way, it sounds a bit harsh, but it really is the truth. So this one gentleman was from china and we were talking about adding value and sharing your knowledge with others and helping them and he said you know in my culture in my country knowing more than others is a competitive advantage and we don't share our, our trade secrets we don't share if i have better knowledge with my system and i'm getting more clients and more success that helps me compete and get get further so we challenged this young guy and i said you know just give it a go jack just two weeks because he was one of the best analysts we had in, in our research company. And I said, just share what you know with the colleagues around you, whether they're in your team or not. If someone is stuck, because people are always stuck, help them. So he was reluctant, but he, he promised to give it a go. After a, two weeks, he came back into the mastermind and he said, he's never felt such a sense of significance. Not no. success, of significance, of, of really having meaning at work and having purpose. And he said, this has changed him and he got so much value out of adding value to others. He just continued with it. That year, he won executive of the year award, which I must tell you, no one under 25 has probably ever got in the company's history. So he got the executive of the, of the, of the year award as young as he was. They read out at his award ceremony a letter from his client, how Jack had just changed and was adding value with the words that came out there to everybody around there. So. <laughs> That for me was one of the best stories ever. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, and then leadership is also so many, so much more, Colin. It's about character. It's about you know developing your character daily because we can being a person with more integrity. You know, keeping our word, keeping our our commitments. And then in this book, it refers to if you want to test your leadership, see if you can implement positive change, because it's easy to maintain a department or area that's going well but when things are not in a good place if you can come in and create positive change then you really do have leadership ability and a good place is also in volunt like voluntary organizations where no one's paid to do what they do if you can get in there maybe take a role i don't know it could be anything any voluntary thing um a charity or something and seeing what influence you you can have Another one is problem solving abilities. Another one is attitude. Attitude is a massive component of leadership because it's contagious. Imagine if you had, let's say titles and roles, a boss who came in the morning and was grumpy and always complaining and was always, you know, what kind of inspiration would that leave the team with? You, you come in grumpy some days and feeling down and you want the boss to change that and like inspire you. So attitude is contagious. It's really important. And especially when things go wrong, that is the point where leaders stand out. When things go wrong, they are not running around with their hair on fire. They are calming people down. They are reassuring people. They are putting a plan to execute and work their way out of this into place. They're comforting people that we're, we're going to be okay and we're gonna solve it. That's what a leader needs to do. If they are frantic and going on, that's not it. So on in the chapter on attitude is a, is a whole section on failure, failing forward and making mistakes. Failure is the biggest opportunity to become more successful. And people sometimes get diminished by failure and they feel terrible and they want to hide under a rock. But really, if we can change our perception there, we can say what went wrong? How did it go wrong? Who's responsible for it going wrong? What can I learn from this? And what can I change so that in the future I can improve? If you really reflected like that and did that, you'd become so much more successful. You could improve your success, even if you improve by 1% a week, at the end of the year, you would be 50% better than you were. I mean, that's massive to a shift like that. The other one is, there's a chapter here on serving people. To really talk about the heart of leadership is honesty, servanthood. You know, people used to, when I was younger, in my 20s, I remember bosses in the ivory towers. They would never come down and greet you. 
you know, if you wanted to ever engage with them, you had to go to them and try to get in there and say hello. That's not leadership. Leadership is the leader getting out of his chair, walking around, greeting everybody, asking them, are you okay? Is there anything you need? You know, do you have everything you need to do the job you need to do as best you can? Where are you struggling? How can I help you? Do they need more training? Anything. It's about helping others succeed. That's the role, actually, of a leader. And then vision casting. Vision is massive. I've dealt with some organizations where I ask the people certain questions and I find that they all have a different idea of where the company is going. And that's a really scary thing. I ask them, what is your purpose in your role in the bigger picture of the whole company's purpose? They can't answer that question either. So there's a lot of responsibility on leaders, making sure that people know where they're going, what direction we're going in and how your role fits into the greater picture. The other one is self-discipline. If a leader can't develop their own self-discipline, they, they are going to struggle. It's as simple as that. Um, it's a fundamental component and you're the one who needs to demonstrate it the most. Um, and then, of course, continuously growing. So John Maxwell talks about something called destination disease. I don't know if you know people like this, but I have met some. They are directors or, you know, or have reached some level of success. And they don't think they need to learn anymore. They want to get companies in to help their middle management and you know other levels develop their leadership ability when you talk to them about you know do you want to do some of this to or before them and they're no 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 you know i'm fine i'm ceo or but that's a great blind spot because leadership is an ongoing lifelong personal development journey and even john maxwell who's written over 100 books and is the world's number one he says i have so much to learn about leadership and you know it's true it's about yourself becoming a better person every day so when can you say that you've, that you've arrived? I don't think anyone could be that arrogant. We need to be humble. So another attribute of leadership is humility. It's being humble, giving the credit to others, not stealing the credit from others, being secure in, in delegation, being secure in empowering other people, because if you're insecure, you're never going to empower people. And if you're never going to empower people, you're never really going to grow in your leadership. And just the most important thing I say, Colin, is how well you lead determines how successful you are. So if my leadership lead was a five out of 10 and I had results coming up four or five, I'm going to get stuck at five and my success is never going to rise higher than my leadership ability. It's called, John Maxwell calls it your leadership lead. So when people wonder why they should develop themselves as leaders, it's because if you want to get results at an eight, nine out of 10, then you must raise the leadership ability to eight or nine out of 10. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely see, like I, I live in Canberra. So I see a lot of, a lot of public servants who hit their leadership lid, uh, and get stuck in a role and can't figure out how to, how to move forward. Uh, so I could see that the real benefit there. And I have to be honest this morning, cause we're, we're interviewing, earlier than usual in the morning. And last night I was working diligently late at night, working on a marketing campaign for an upcoming event. So I was a bit low on energy coming into this, but after hearing you speak, it's really lifted me up. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the energy. I'm feeling the empowered to find that, that leadership and go in that, in that direction. Um, so it's been, a well, if I was there in camera with you in your vicinity, I will just say to you, can I help you, Colin? Do you need any help with whatever you've got to work on today? And I really would, from my heart, I would say, can I help you just to make your, whatever you've got to work on, that's this big job, better done. Well, I, I just, yeah, I think it's been a really valuable conversation. Because like I said earlier, look, people throw around leadership a lot uh, and they, they, they just bandy the word around a bit. So it becomes less impactful. But after talking to you, I can see the enormous benefit that comes with understanding leadership and, and implementing it in the, in the workplace. And, you know, that coming from a genuine place of, of wanting to serve your customers and your people who work for you better. Um, but are there any, are there any myths around? Cause I mean, just talking about people banding it around, are there any misconceptions around leadership? Yes. I think the management myth is definitely the first one. People think cause they've got the title, they are now a leader. Imagine a salesperson being promoted now to sales manager. And now they just think, 
that they, they and let, let's say they were the best sales manager. Once they're in that role, they've got the title, but they're actually not a leader unless they've developed the leadership ability. And this is the biggest problem in many organizations. They promote the best, let's call them technician. They promote the best technician into the role of running the team. And then what happens is two things go wrong. You lose your best salesperson or your best technician or your best accountant, and then you gain a bad leader and the whole team becomes unhappy. Because if a leader is not a good leader, everybody struggles. And just by the way, that leadership lid I was talking about, I'll tell you something even more interesting. If a leader's leadership lid is, let's just say a five out of 10, and they go and recruit the best in the industry, nines out of 10, 10 out of 10 of the best quality people, um, the best experience and skills into this team, their results cannot go higher than the leadership lid of the leader level. So nine out of 10s can't perform more than a five if they're under a leader with a five out of 10 lid. So it's really imperative that companies develop leadership at all levels. So that's a myth is management. The pioneer myth is another one thinking that whoever is out front and going for things first, whatever is generally the leader, but it's a different skill. Entrepreneurial myth is another one where people think because someone saw a gap in the market, went out there and, you know, found an opportunity in that gap, they're automatically a, a leader, but it's not, it's a very different skill set because yeah. leadership's about people. Um, the position myth is the worst, which is the same, similar as management, you know, give me the title, give me the position and people will listen to me. How many times have you heard that people aren't listening to me? I'm trying to, you know, create positive change. No one's listening. Just give me the, give me the title. Then they promote the person and you know what? Nothing really changes. And if people do listen, they do it because they are, um, almost feeling they have to, because the person's their boss and they determine the increases and their bonuses and their promotions. But the minute the leader goes on leave for two weeks, or there's something they have to do uh, after hours or something is required to go the extra mile, you might have to work on the weekend. Those people will be shutting their laptops and they're going to the park. They're going, they will not be there. When you've got a real leader, people will walk over red hot coals for you. They will stay late. They will work on a Saturday and Sunday. And you know what? You'll probably reward them and give them time off if you were a good leader to compensate for that. But the point is people will walk to the ends of the earth for a good leader. And people don't leave companies when they're unhappy. They leave leaders. They leave their bosses. And it's generally something to do with most often belittling people, humiliating them, um, you know, not trusting them. That's a big deal. Trust. By the way, I never said this before, but trust is the foundation of leadership. It is yeah. so important. And every decision we make as people, whether you in any title or role, because I said everyone's a leader, every decision we make when it comes to other people, we are either improving our trust score or, or bank balance, or we are withdrawing from that bank balance. And if you want to make change in an organization, you better have a lot of trust. And if you lose trust with people, you can't implement change. So those are most of the main myths I'd say is positions, titles, being an entrepreneur, being a pioneer. Okay. Now, now, is there anywhere else, because we're this, this keeps happening. I keep getting these amazing people on this conversation, on these chats, and I just want to keep going for hours, but we've got to wrap it up. So where, where can people go if they want to find out more information? About leadership. Yeah, about leadership or, or about working with yourself? Working with myself, please just Google my name. It's Janine Shaka International. That's my website. Uh, yep, so I would say just go to Janine Shaka International. I'm also on Facebook. Um, I'm also on Instagram. You'll find me there. And just for everyone listening, I do want to give, and I'm very generous and uh, intentional about it. So definitely twice a month i'm available to give a free one hour leadership training to any organization just come in during lunchtime like a lunch and learn inspire the team have fun i talk about three things what is leadership why should i develop my leadership ability and then if the answer is okay i think i should well then how so what it is why i should and how to actually do it just a free talk it's about 45 minutes take a bit of interaction and engagement with the audience have some fun so anyone out there would like that to inspire their team, it's great. Have a guest speaker come in and just add a bit of, you know, inject a bit of enthusiasm into the workplace. So that's another option. Fantastic. Well, look, if, if 
you're watching this on YouTube, check the comments. If you're listening to this on the podcast, check the, the show notes. I'll put links down there so you can get in touch with Janine. Janine, thanks very much for your time. It's been fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colin.